Hi, my name is James Kim, and uh, here's a video of an ESTJ, James Kim, which is me, uh, that's trying to assess what ENTJs are like. And um, I'm afraid this video is going to be long. Not so long, but, but you know, to your taste, it's going to be very long. And um, I saw, I've seen a lot of videos where it doesn't have a lot of subscribers, but they have long videos, but I found myself watching a lot of them, like long forms. And I had no problem with listening to long forms. I, and I hope you have that attention span. I'm sorry for asking for it, but I hope you have that. Um, sorry, I have to write something. I, I wrote notes about um, how ENTJs are like and I am a, a banker I work in a bank called Hanalne in Korea and um, I, I just started working there because you know I studied finance and accounting in, in school and um, Why am I talking about this? I don't know why. I have to talk about ENTJs, I'm sorry. I, I, I'm just... Uh, I'm just very bored. Uh, I, I, I didn't know what to do um, tonight. And I, I was just studying everything. Um, I was just studying this and that um, at my house. I was asking, well, what shall I do today? Uh, why not uh, make a video about e ENTJs? The, and you might ask, well, wh why are you making a video about ENTJs? And I'm going to have to say is, uh, as an ESTJ, I'm an um, Enneagram uh, 3. Three wing four. I, I I saw a lot of ENTJs in my life, and um, they had a. I, I I always had tremendous fascination about them. Because usually, the ENTJs in my life, in school, in college, in high school, in middle school, they were never conventional. They were never conservative, not in the political sense, but they were very progressive. They, they, they always seem to be going for something that is inex, inexpressible. Inexpressible, yes. I too go for some things. I, I, I care about how I'm perceived, how my words are perceived. I care about, like, compared to the ENTJs that I've seen in my life, and my and compared to comparing them to me, I am quite conventional in the sense that I go for things that are established things that are about success, while the ENTJs go for success, but they're not established things. They're not established. Um, they are mostly going for things that are... And I hope you um, forgive me for being silent at some times. I'm not... I don't make a lot of videos, so I, I have to be silent and think about what I'm going to say. I realize I mean, a lot of people do that. They're silent. The things, the goals they go for are mostly about fighting a conventional establishment. 
that is not right. And the, the, their goal is more creative than mine. I feel, for me, uh, I identify as a conservative, politically. I am more about um, protecting a certain way of behavior and establishment and conduct. And whenever I talk to ENTJs, they always try to They always try to break the this procedure that I'm going into and in a sense annoy me not only they will physically try to stop me sometimes but they will psychologically say something in order to you know get me off track or make me think about whether my procedure is right um, the smartest ENTJs that I've ever been with they were they didn't devalue me as a person they, they weren't just saying all oh, establishments are bad they always said something about how what if the traditions we have or the procedures or the establishments we have is not right and I, I feel it, I feel completely I, I agree with that person whenever that person says or it gives me reasons why the establishment is wrong and of course we have to change it but if we have that as our um, society if that's the only thing we have of course we're gonna have to uh, of course we're gonna have to you know go with that procedure because that's all we have ENTJs tend to just be like oh let's just live in chaos rather than do that but if that's all we have, we're going to have to do it. And th th that's one of the biggest problems I have with ENTJs. Anyways, the healthy ones always try to... Um, convince me. Or make me try to understand their logic. Of why the procedure is wrong. Which is very insightful for me for example I had this friend called um, Charles Charles um, his name is Charles Breckwood and um, I met him when I was in America um, for a while I, right now I'm in Korea but when I was in high school and college you know um, I, I, I used to uh, talk with him a lot um, He would I had a way of thinking since my childhood and He would just break it all off completely and make me question everything that I had in my uh, way of thinking, which is which which can be groundbreaking, and make it, it made me feel like who who can I trust? Who can I trust? Um, Charles Breckwood was a philosophy. Uh, enthusiast and he didn't go to college and but 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 I saw him study a lot about it I, I met him in a pool game 
because I, I, I played a lot of pool with my friends and um, he, he used to come all the time, most of the time by himself. And he has an ENTJ, um, but sometimes with friends, but, but a lot of times by himself just to practice. I mean, he, he was a little bit crazy. He, he was able to be alone, but be with other people. But he would always try to practice every day just by himself. He doesn't care about how other people think about him. I think that's, the, that's one of the things about um, Charles Breckwood. It's his lack of F-I, uh, F-E. Because when, when your F-E demon is just right under everything, you just don't care about how other people perceive you. Even though everyone is playing with people, he's the only one who's playing by himself. I just struck a conversation with him because I always saw him, um, even when I saw beers with him, and, and that's how we made friendships. I, I was struck because he was so similar to me, but in a different way. Um, anyway, uh, Charles Breckwood. I guess he's the main character of the person that I'm trying to depict about ENTJs. I mean, because he's, all, he's mostly the guy that I've been with to actually understand the NTJs. He studied a lot of philosophy and he, he, he really cared about spirituality. Uh, so he's a... He, he not... Although he was American, a white boy, um, he... I saw he studied the Tao Te Ching. He studied Confucius. He studied everything like that. And I was so I was I, he he knew more than me about it. Um, I didn't know anything about Confucius or uh, I'm Korean, so like I I didn't know anything about in those spiritual terms. He he, he was talking about Eckhart Tolle. He he was talking about uh, Meister Eckhart in Germany, or he really liked Osho, which is funny. I, I've read some of Osho's book and books, and it would it, it really hurt my brain. It just didn't vibe with me, so I just kind of like broke it off. But he liked it. He told me that Confucius was a was just complete bull. And as a Korean myself, I, I identified with a lot of Confucian principles because. Korean society is mostly about Confucian uh, structure, which is respect your elderly. You know, just like Christianity is a big uh, proponent for America and uh, France and you know, some, some Western countries, Latin, you know, the, the, the stem of Latin, whatever, you know, Roman Empire, something like that, I don't know. Uh, just like Christianity had tremendous impact, political impact, actually, on Western society, Confucius had political impact. Because Confucius was basically not a religious person, but he had a religious impact on Korea, China, and Japan, and a political impact, certainly, with Korea, China, and Japan. And I had this philosophy by myself, taught by my parents, and my society and a lot of Koreans were like this are like this in uh, even in America Korean Americans are like this at least if you don't know this um, we have our honorific way of languages we have to speak in our honorific way in order to respect the elder uh, honorific language doesn't exist in Chinese but it does exist in Japan but the, the the degree to how Koreans have to show respect to elderly is not as bad as uh, it's not a, in Japan it's not as bad as Korea. Uh, Korea is kind of like a cult, <laughs> you know. Um, I mean, Charles Breckwood showed me this. He said um, he had a keen eye. He had a horrible keen eye. It was, it was horrible. It was so good. I, I was amazed at what he was saying. He said, respecting elderly 
that principle from Confucius is the most dumbest thing that he's ever heard. And he, he said he feels like it's destroying Asian society. And I said, why? And I told him, no, 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 no. That's not, uh, I know it sounds weird, but we, you are born by your parents. I told him, you, it's your child, you are born by your parents. I know you've been educated in America your whole life, but you don't understand. You were born by your parents. And if you don't respect the seed of your existence, of your body, then you're basically disrespecting your own body. You know? And he said, and he said, well, my ancestors is my seed too. And if I do, and I said, yeah, basically your ancestor is your seed. That you exist because of your ancestors. And if you disrespect your ancestors, if you don't love them, if you don't keep them in mind all the time, of course, you're not going to be um, prosperous because you are basically disrespecting your own body, you know, because your ancestors are the reasons why your body exists. I don't know if they gave you a soul, but it is an empirical fact that your ancestors have made you have created your um, existence of the body. I told him that. And he said, um, James, um, James, I, I understand what you're saying, but I guess I'm not, he said, James, uh, Ch Charles said, um, I'm not trying to say Confucius was wrong. I'm actually trying to say Confucius was right. I'm saying, um, respect your elderly. That phrase comes from a, a very stupid way of thinking. Just how people might not think of uh, love your neighbors or love your enemies. They don't think it deeply enough. Just like that, respect your elderly. They don't think deeply enough. And I said, what, what are you talking about? And Charles said, um, I read in this book by uh, Han Fei Tzu. He said that. Um, and I said, who's Han, who's Han Fei Tzu? And he said, well, it's one of the philosophers that um, the first emperor of China really liked. Uh, although it's a legalist philosopher and I said who's that uh, and then he said well Han Fei Su says the best sons and daughters don't show too much respect to their parents and when the son and daughter is too mannerly in a manual way in a habitual way, everyone knows that the parent and child relationship is stunted and it has no love. And after reading that, James, Kim, uh, I realized the problems of Asian society. It runs through um, Asian society runs completely through a a non-thinking obsessive uh, withholding of structure of simply, blindly adhering to either structure, like the government, or either to the elderly. Because 
people who are in their 50s usually have the power, political power. And rightly so, he says. I mean, Charles says, of course they should have, but they should use it responsibly. But Charles says, they're abusing their power with that phrase, respect your elderly. I said, how, 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 how could you say that? And he says, well, reading that phrase from Han Fei Tzu, that parent-child relationships, when they're too mannerly or they're too manually, uh, you know, they have some conduct in a habitual sense, not in a spontaneous sense. Um, reading that phrase made him realize that uh, honorifics in Asian cultures, it's just a dumb way of thinking. And he told me that uh, the best way to honor your parents and the best way to honor your ancestors is to just sometimes fight your parents, sometimes fight your ancestors. It doesn't mean to like hurt them deeply, but Sometimes leave them, leave them alone. And some, you know, it's so easy, you know. He said, he said he read in one philosophy book. Uh, if you want to learn how to love, you have to learn how to leave first. I mean, and I said what? And he said, you know, like. Meetings and love can only exist when there is a leaving, a, a, a breakup. It's like the yin and yang. And I was like, okay. And if you are not willing to leave for the good of your parents, if you're not leaving, willing to leave for the good of your ancestors, you're, you're never going to be a loving person to your parents and your ancestors. And I said, Okay. And so he said, sometimes saying something bitter is the right thing to do to your parents and your ancestors. But that doesn't mean saying something bitter or even leaving them. That doesn't mean that you're disrespecting your parents. And I was amazed because I never thought of it that way. And after hearing that, I, I've become very, I, I immediately just went the other way, where I've become very, <laughs> anybody who was saying that, uh, who, who did that, like blind respect, there's so much of it in, in this country. Uh, thankfully, in my bank, it doesn't happen. Maybe it's because of me, I don't know. Um, because I, you know, I, I'm kind of like the leader of it. And I don't allow anybody to do that. It's a rare occurrence in this country, but you know, I'm the controller. Anybody who does that, I just fucking fire them. But <laughs> what Charles said was very interesting. The way he lived, he, he always had a dream of, uh, he, he wanted to be an entrepreneur and he was not a successful one. And he, he, was, uh, he was studying tech just by himself. Um, he, he, I think he wanted to make a software business or something just by himself. I, I don't know what he's doing right now. I guess I have to call him, uh, but uh, we were only 20 years old. His, his, his desire to think things differently and just to call me out and tell me that I'm full of shit about certain 
way of thinking. And he told me that I shouldn't live that way. <laughs> and, I was, and I agreed with him. But he, he had this forward thinking way of living where I, I was just, you know, living this my own way. You know, just working at my accounting studies, financial studies. Well, I wasn't thinking about that. I was just doing my own thing. But but his philosophy was contributing to his vision, his goal. But while those things just didn't help with my ambitions, so I didn't think of those things. But 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 when he actually told me that thing, um, my way of leadership completely changed. How I you know, talk to people. I mean, he impacted me that way, which was, which is um, special, and it's very, uh, it's something that I have to be thankful of. I don't know what he's doing right now, but I was tremendously thankful of him because of that, because I may, I, I understood, sorry, I'm really hot, but, that, made me understand a certain logic about how to live a successful, how to be a good leader. And I was able to, I had this whole structure in my life and I just completely just destroyed it. <laughs> The way of thinking in my leadership style. I, I, I was, I, I cared about, you know, um, respecting my elders. Like, like I, I wasn't like, I, I, I wasn't like that dogmatic. But I always felt like there was validity in it. But he completely destroyed that validity. Not that he completely destroyed the principle, but he destroyed how we conduct this way of principles, how, do, how we conduct ourselves for this principle was completely wrong. He completely destroyed the validity of that conduct, those conducts. So, um, I was able to, uh, whenever my colleagues or my, my uh, people who work for me, when they do anything uh, stupid like that, that way um, Charles tried to uh, destroy my way of conduct, I destroy theirs. And I think that's one of the same things about ENTJs and ESTJs where uh, we like to fight things, we like to lead things, and when we feel like something's wrong, we just completely destroy it in our leadership, of course. Um, it's just hilarious. You know, I just wanted to talk about this. Um, I was just thinking about my experience with ENTJs. This is one of my experience of an ENTJ. And I don't know how this relates to being an ENTJ, but... I guess my summary here is... Um, we both were looking for a vision. He had a vision and I had a vision. I, my vision was more about how to uh, make the society running. You know, and how to be successful in that running society establishment. While he was more about I don't care about the establishment. I can do whatever I want, which is a little bit chaotic, but it's just different. It's not, I don't think that's more superior to mine. I feel like this conservative view is needed for that thing to exist. People like that exist and I exist, and we help each other. Um, and when something's wrong with us, um, you can destroy it. But when I feel something's wrong with that, we destroy that. 
the important thing is what is right. You know, and um, this is what I felt like. It was just a different leadership style. He led led me to understand my problems of the way someone conducts themselves. And with that, I, I've been able to conduct my friends and my colleagues to do what's right. And I was able to make an environment where uh, a wrong thing doesn't happen. You know, because I, 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 I care about principles, I care about morality, I care about uh, what's right. Although I am conservative, I, I always try to do what's right. Um, but I do feel, you know, the way he lived is a bit hard because he never does something conventional. And he always has to be uh, thinking out of the box. Which is uh, sometimes good, but sometimes too chaotic. And uh, as, anyways, I just talked about what I felt about, you know, about what kind of experience I had with one person. And thank you for listening and uh, like my video or uh, subscribe feel like it was a good content please comment and tell me uh, what you felt about this video